Hello, everybody. Welcome to Aspire. Hello. Um, so, can you praise Emma uh, before we start? Jesus Christ, our dear Heavenly Father in Heaven, thank you for this beautiful day given this Lord. Please guide us as we, as, we, as we do the meeting and please help us to, 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 um, to stay away from coronavirus in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we'll be learning about, today we'll be learning about Martin, Martin. Martin. Mary Time by Uncle Lulama Zono. What do you think Mary Time is? Something about the sea. Okay. Can you repeat the question? I didn't hear. What do you think Mary Time is? Oh, we can ask the guy who is sitting with Uncle Lulama. <laughs> uh, well, Uncle, Uncle, Uncle Lulama will finish his presentation, start his presentation. So, Uncle Lulama, please start. Okay, I can go ahead and start. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't know, that was, was that Kiki or Zena? It was Kiki. Okay, thank you so much, Kiki, for kicking, uh, for uh, kickstarting this program for us. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Very, very good uh, uh, way to start this program. Well done. You've done a really good, a great job. Um, hopefully, uh, by the end of this uh, program, you will know what maritime is or what shipping is all about. Okay. Am I clearly mm -hmm. audible to everyone? Can everyone hear me? Can everyone see me clearly? Yes. yes. Uh, I think okay. so. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, can everyone see that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, um, guys and girls, um, what is very important um, is that maritime as a whole is quite broad, okay? Um, we've, we have together, we have about 20 to 30 minutes that we're going to speak together about maritime. Um, that time is too little to cover about, to speak about everything that maritime actually covers. So I'm just gonna focus um, on the most uh, popular one, or a lot of people know about aspect of maritime, which are ships and ports, okay? So I'll just let me limit myself to that, okay? So let us get this uh, party started. <laughs> Okay, ships are very important. That's the first thing. If there are no ships, <coughs> you won't have food on the table. Um, you won't have um, lights. Uh, you won't have any form of heating. So you'll freeze to death. Um, there will be darkness everywhere. And you will go hungry if there are no ships. So ships are very important for our day-to-day -day life. Okay. Um, if it's possible, um, can you guys um, perhaps unmute Tine? Maybe mute yourself uh, or somebody mute him because, okay. Thank you so much. So ships are very important. That's the first thing. Okay, then let's move on to the next one. Um, I want to begin my uh, talk with the Bible, okay? In the Bible, we see many examples where ships and the sea is mentioned, 
Okay, the very first one we hear about is in the, um, during the flood, during the days of Noah. If you wanted to be saved, you had to go to Noah's ark, as we can see there. Otherwise, you will go to drown in the floods. So that's the first time we, we hear about a structure which looks like something that floats in the water. Obviously, the, the, that one couldn't drive itself. It, uh, it floats in the time we hear about a ship or a structure that is floating in the water. Another time we see a ship on, uh, in the Bible is when Jonah was thrown um, into the sea. I don't know if you guys know that story. Do you know that story? Yes. Great. Yes. Okay. Yes. He was supposed to go to um, Nineveh, but he ended up going to place all together. All right. So here we see him being thrown over overboard. Okay? So that's another story we hear about in the Bible about a ship. So he's thrown off a ship. Another story is a story of Jesus. Okay. He calms the uh, the waters. Um, on the in the river Gennesaret in the Bible, okay. So we see the Jesus on a ship or on a boat, on a vessel, crossing the river, and there's a storm. All right. So the Bible, I've I've mentioned this few ones, but the Bible is full of stories about ships or people on boats or things of that nature. Okay. So yes. So we. We have that situation. Okay, boys and girls, there are many different types of ships. I won't be able to cover all of them here, okay? Um, uh, I'll just mention the most popular ones or the ones that um, a lot of people are aware of. Um, the ones that you are most likely to see maybe if you visit the port or if you drive near the sea enough where ships are, uh, or if you watch TV or Google something or things of that nature. So um, I mentioned, but there are di many different types of ships. The ones I'm going to mention here are only a few of them, okay? There are container ships. There are crude oil tankers or tanker ships. There are bulk ships. There are LNG ships. LNG stands for liquefied natural gas ships. You have chemical ships. You have row row ships. Row row means roll on, roll off. Okay. Row row ships. You have general ships. You have cruise ships. Okay. I'll explain all of these ships one by one so that at least you guys have a better understanding of what uh, the different ships are all about. Okay. So let's start with the container ship, okay? Uh, I'm sure when you guys are traveling on the road, you will see one of those trucks of there, over there. I'm sure you guys have seen one of those trucks, big trucks with massive container at the back, okay? Uh, that container is carried by the container, by this ship over here, all right? It's carried by that ship over there. So that ship can carry thousands upon thousands of those containers, okay? The biggest container ship right now can carry about 23,000 of those ships, I mean, of those containers, okay? So those, those containers um, 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 are the ones that bring everything that we see around us. Um, many things that we see around us are brought to us by container ships. Computers, as you can see, laptops, the couches we sit on, the phones that we use. Um, if you look, look around you, and if you can count nine, uh, if you can count 10 items you can see around you, nine of those 10 items were brought by ships. Okay, so ships are very, very important. Container ships are very, very important. Okay, that is one type of ship. Okay, let's move on to the next type of ship. Crude oil carriers or crude oil 
tankers. Okay, those ships um, they carry they carry oil. Okay, as you can see there, oil. Okay, oil is uh, comes out of the ground. Okay, these ships carry that oil that comes out of the ground. It's very very important. We use this oil for for different things, for a lot of things, uh, for power generation, uh, for uh, for transport energy, uh, for man, I can go on and on and on about different uses for oil. Okay, uh, for aircrafts, they they they, uh, they depend on this oil. For um, yeah, for different forms of energy, for different forms of use. Uh, Crude oil is very, very important. So these ships carry the, the oil um, in, with, that comes out of the ground. So that's why it's called crude. It's not refined yet. It's not changed to different products, okay? It's out of the ground, okay? So it's called crude oil. So these ships, crude oil tankers or crude oil carriers, they carry, they carry this type of, um, of cargo um, out of the ground. Then we move on to the next one, bulk carrier. A bulk carrier carries grain. It carries rice. It carries uh, coal. Yes, yes, let's say uh, it carries, um, you know, um, uh, yes, barley, um, spices. Yes, boy, it carries. Um, any cargo that is transported in bulk, in huge, large amounts of, um, of volumes, in big quantities, all right? Uh, I've shown you there. I've shown you rice. I've shown you oats. I've shown you millies. I've shown you all sorts of things. I've shown you coal. Yes, you know, it's very, 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 these ships, um, they, they, they're very big. They're very, very big. And they carry these quantities and take them from one part of the world to another part of the world. Okay, let's move on to a to another type of ship. Now, the LNG, liquefied natural gas ships. Uh, many of you have got a heater at home, okay, or a stove that uses gas, and uh, not the not the heater that you plug into electricity or a stove that you plug into electricity, but your gas stove, okay? The gas inside of that, uh, of that, uh, of that heater, of that stove, is carried by this type of ship, um, the liquefied natural gas. That's one, that's one thing that this, uh, the ship carries. Um, it can carry sometimes um, methanol, and other kinds of um... okay <laughs> uh, yes it carry different types of um, yeah um, um, natural gases okay that we use for different uses whether it's in manufacturing whether it's in um, uh, energy generation or heating cooking this ship carries that type of cargo okay those types of things and then the next type of ship, I spoke about this earlier, we call this a row row ship. Row row ship is called row row because the cargo of the ship rolls into the ship and it rolls off the ship, okay? So that's why it's called a row row ship. The cargo that this ship carries, it carries cars, it carries trucks, it carries heisters, it carries um, like vehicles. Uh, vehicles. Yes, right, let's say it carries um, any kind of ship, uh, any kind of cargo that has wheels and can be able to drive itself into the ship. It rolls itself into the ship, okay? So um, trucks, cars, heisters, um, any kind of vehicle, all right? So as you can see there, you can see the trucks and the cars driving into the back of the of the ship so that is a row row ship okay and then you have a cruise ship now a lot of people who go to holidays 
or have been on holiday ship or on holidays, some of people like to go onto the ship, all right? This is a holiday ship. This is a fun ship. Um, it's a, um, it's got, it's got uh, swimming pools. It's got food everywhere. It's got, um, it's got ice skating in there if you want. It's got casinos. It's got cinemas. It's got, uh, um, you know, um, uh, beds, sleeping areas. It's got restaurants, you know. It's got a lot of nice things, all right? So that is one type of ship that was had. It's called a cruise liner or a cruise ship, okay? So those are a few of the ships that we have. Um, another type of ship is a products tanker. All right, a products tanker carry all kinds of products. All right, um, you can see there the oil that we use to cook. All right, these ships carry that oil in large, uh, in very big quantities. The juice that we drink is carried uh, in, the, in these um, chemical tankers or product tankers. All right, uh, the diesel, the petrol that we use in our cars is carried by these types of ships. So these are products tankers, all right? And uh, that's one type of ship. Then we have a general cargo ship, all right? Uh, it's called a general cargo ship because it can carry most any type of cargo, all right? It's not specialized. It doesn't carry one type of cargo. It carries different types of cargos. It can carry, um, something that we call brake bulk cargo. Brake bulk cargo is a type of uh, cargo that is too big. For instance, as you can see those round items over there, yeah. you know, um, those things are very big and don't fit into a container or um, things of that nature. So they have a, a special kind of ship, which is a general cargo ship they can be transported using. Uh, you can see those pipes there, all right? Um, drain pipes. Drain pipes. Um, you can have uh, yachts. Sometimes you can have yachts being transported into these ships, uh, general cargo ships. Sometimes you have windmills being transported by using these ships. Um, you have containers, odd containers being uh, transported by general cargo ships. So general cargo ships are very versatile. They can be used for different types of cargo. So that's one type of ship that is there. Okay, so we'll leave it there for the ships. Uh, I can go on and on about different types of ships. Now we'll move on to uh, the ports that uh, South Africa actually has. Uh, South Africa has eight Ports are, let me start this way. Ports are places where ships can come in and offload and um, unload, load the cargo that they are carrying, all right? Whether they're carrying bulk or whether they're carrying uh, liquid or whatever the case may be. Uh, ports are the places where ships can actually go in, discharge cargo or load cargo. In South Africa, there are eight commercial ports, eight commercial ports, right? Um, we have Saldana Bay, Cape Town, Mossel Bay, Port Elizabeth, Nuha, East London, Durban, Richards Bay. Um, those are South African commercial ports, okay? Uh, I've shown you uh, pictures from the top, as you can see there, beautiful, beautiful view of the Table Mountain there in the background. And also the, the more beautiful view is the layout of the port itself, all right? Yes. So that's how a port looks like if you were flying on a helicopter or if you were, or, or yourself, or yeah, flying yourself. I don't know if you had wings and you could fly. That's what you would see if you're flying over Cape Town port. And that is the kind of picture that you would also see on your right hand side of the Durban port. 
uh, as you can see there, a ship is coming out. Beautiful, beautiful picture um, of the layout of the port there. Uh, stunning, really, really stunning. Um, you know, I mean, haven't seen something so beautiful in a very long time. Uh, but yeah, those are the two main ports of South Africa um, in terms of um, cargo um, uh, volumes, in terms of the number of ships that actually visit the ports, and the variety of cargo they can actually carry. Okay, now boys and girls, we are going to move on to um, the different careers uh, or jobs that you would have or uh, the, that you would be able to, to do if you wanted to work at sea or on a ship, all right? Um, as you can see there, uh, we've got a ship captain. A ship captain is a person who drives the ship, responsible to drive the ship from point A to point B, from one port to another port. Okay, so that is the uh, a, a ship's captain. All right, a, uh, and then also you have a ship's engineer. Um, a ship's engineer as responsibility is to make sure that the, um, the engines of the ship, they run smoothly, there are no problems, the ship has enough power to move from one port to another port, all right, without any problems. Basically, I mean, I'm, I'm simplifying this for, so that you guys can be able to understand it. So that's the ship's engineer, to make sure that, that the ship has enough power to go through the ocean, to go from one port to another port. And what is also important is that the engines of the ship also um, can run um, with smoothly without any problems. Okay. And then you also have um, offshore jobs. And what you can see there, the bottom of that picture, that is an oil rig. Um, an oil rig basically is, um, is, a, is a kind of equipment or mechanism, or I would want to call it a ship, or it, moves, it, 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 it doesn't move by itself, it's pulled by something. Uh, but it basically, um, what an what a oil rig does, it digs oil out of the floor of the ocean. All right, that's what it does. It digs, um, it finds oil uh, from the floor of the seabed underneath the ocean and then brings it up so that that oil can be used for different things. Okay, so you can, you can work there. All right, so that's another, that's another career. Um, someone who wants to go to sea can also have. Okay, so those are the few ones that I've, I've mentioned for you guys there. And then let's say you, you want to work with ships, but you don't want to go to sea and be away for many months and not see your family and not see your loved ones, you know, things of that nature. But you still want to work with ships. All right. There are a number of careers for that as well. You can buy yourself a ship and be an owner of a ship, all right? You can build your own ship. Yes, 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 Lesedi. Um, yes, so you can buy yourself a ship and own that ship. Right? And, uh, have the captain, have the engineer, um, you know, working for you. And that is one, that is one thing. Um, you can be a ship broker. Uh, if, for instance, people want to buy a ship or they want to sell a ship to somebody else, they come to you and then what you do, you, the, the, the guy who wants to sell his ship, you take him to the guy who wants to buy the ship and then you bring them together and they speak together and they decide, okay, I want to sell this or I want to buy for this ship or how much I want. They want to speak together and then you bring them together and get them to agree on the price and the terms and the conditions like that. All right. So that's what a ship broker does. It brings together. Yes, you, you help them to negotiate. That's right, boy. You help them to negotiate. So that's what a ship broker does. Helps the, the buyer and the seller 
to negotiate on uh, the sale of a ship or yeah, the buying of a ship. A salvage operator. Sometimes ships get into trouble at sea, all right? They get damaged, uh, they, 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 they crash, they run into other ships, there are accidents at sea, all right? These things happen. Yeah, so the engines fail and things of that nature. So there are people who have towing ships who go out and help these ships that have got problems, all right? That is another job that you can have, all right? Um, you have people who, um, you know, uh, who fix ships. So if your ship has got a problem, it's got a leak somewhere, the engines are not working, or something of that kind, you know, um, there's a hole in your ship, or, you know, it got into an accident, and now it needs to fix again, you know, um, you have can or ship repairers, people who fix ship if the ships have got a problem. Okay, uh, you have people who insure ships. All right, because uh, ships cost a lot of money. All right, millions and millions of rands. Okay, because it's, uh, because it's so big, because it's so strong. Because it carries so much cargo, all right? So there is so much money in budget. So one person or one company cannot have so as that amount of money all by themselves. Even if, they, if, even if a few companies come together and put money together to buy ships and run ships like that, if a ship gets, in, gets into a problem, they will not have money on hand sometimes to fix that ship. All right. So there are people who, call, who are called um, uh, marine insurers or ship insurers, hull and machinery insurers and things of that nature. OK, these people, when ships are broken, when ships get into accident or when cargo is lost, they can pay on behalf of the ship owners to fix the ship. All right. To fix the ship and uh, to repair things, to replace cargo and all these kinds of things. All right. So. If you don't want to go to sea, but you want to work with the ships, you can be a marine insurer, okay? Insure ships. The last one, if you don't want to go to sea, but you want to work with ships, you can be a maritime lawyer, all right? So you, um, you represent um, in court, or you advise, you give legal advice, um, or you come up with laws that, um, or you improve on laws that uh, have to do with the oceans or the seas, that have to do with ships, that have to do with safety of lives at ships, that have to do with safety of ships at sea, you know, so you can come up with laws or, you know, you can, um, you can go to court if there are cases to, you know, represent it in, in, uh, in, in, um, in, a, in, a, in a court of law. So you can be a maritime lawyer. Okay, so um, those are some of the options uh, that you have. There are many, many, many others out there. Um, that you choose, but I've chosen these ones for you so that you guys can um, have something to, uh, a few options to think about. But you can do your own research when you have time. Or you can get in touch with me um, after this. Okay, now I want to speak to you guys about um, Local people who are making waves, who are making uh, change, who are doing great things at sea. Local South Africans, okay? Uh, go to the up on your screen. Tag um, Precious Dube, Bongi Mbambo, and Upinki Zungi. Sorry. These, those, those three ladies over there, over there were the first black uh, tag masters in our country. Okay, um, they're the guys, if a ship is coming into port, okay, they help it to come into port because the ship is so big and the port is so small. So the ship has to um, maneuver and move very slowly and carefully inside the port. So you need someone who knows the and port sure very well. It doesn't, yeah. crash. it doesn't crash, yeah, make sure it doesn't crash. So you need someone who's going to help the ship come into port. So those three ladies over there, they help ships 
come into ports because they know the ports so well. Okay. And then the lady on the other side, she is um, a ship's navigator and a dredge master. All right. In a port. All right. The port sometimes there can be a lot of sand at the at the bottom of the of the sea. at the bottom of the sea. So now and again, you need to dig the the port so that uh, you know it doesn't get the too many too much sand. You take out the sand uh, whenever it actually builds up at the at the at the floor of the, of the at the at the at the floor of the ocean. Right? At the sea floor. Yes, at the sea floor. That's correct, boy. At the sea floor. So this lady uh, works at the Devonport, and then she helps. She works on a, in a on a ship that actually takes out and goes out and vacuum cleans the sleeve, the sea floor. All right, so that the port stays deep enough, and there it takes out any any um, you know any unneeded material at the at the at the at the sea floor. All right. So yes, that's another lady over there. Yeah, she's doing great things uh, locally. All right, uh, and then you have Belinda Bennett. All right, uh, also she's a cruise liner captain. Those ships that we talk about where you want to swim, you go there. If you wanna eat a lot of food, you go there. If you wanna bungee jump, you go there. Food. If you wanna, uh, if you wanna, you know, Go ice skating, you go there. Those big ships, those cruise liners. She was the first um, uh, female captain, cruise liner captain, all right? Belinda Bennett, she's, um, she's from St. Helena, a very, very close by to South Africa um, on, the, um, on the Atlantic Ocean. Yes, so those are, yeah, she did a very, very great job for herself. And then on the right-hand side, you have a lady called Mama Uzimasa Mabela, all right? I don't know if you guys do you know warships, ships that go out there and fight in war. Yes, my mom works with the army. Oh, yes, that's right, boy. All right, so this lady was the very first naval vessel commander, first female, black female naval vessel commander, so a warship. She commands a warship, all right? She is from South Africa. Uh, you may see her in the news one of these days or sometime, or if you Google her, you'll be able to find her. So those are the, some of the people that are doing great things in South Africa in relationship to ships. Uh, Kiki, Zena, you wanna say something? Is she still alive? Yes, please. Yes, boy, she's still alive. She's still alive, she's still alive. <laughs> okay, so as we close our session today, I just want to remember, I'm going to remind you guys, ships are very important, all right? We need a lot, we need ships for a lot of things in our day-to-day -day life. If there are no ships, you won't have phones. If there are no ships, you won't have food on your table. If there are no ships, you won't have cars to drive, all right? If there are no ships, you won't be able to have lights, okay? So ships are very important. Everything you see around you is brought to you by a ship at some point in its journey. It was carried by a ship at some point in its journey. So ships are very, very, very important. Mm -hmm. So guys, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, at this point, I'm going to allow you guys to ask questions okay if you have a question uh please raise your hand and then i'll be able to take your question okay marga let's start with you how how many how many drivers are they in a in a in a ship Ah, boy, Marga, that's a very, very good question. That's a very, very bright question. Um, okay, in a ship, uh, you have about, depending how big the ship is, you can have anything between 
10 people, uh, no, no, anything between 10 people up to 20, 30 people in a ship. Uh, all of them have different roles that they play. Not all of them are driving the ship, but they have different roles. You have the captain, you have the engineer, you have the chief officer, you have um, the chief, the chief engineer, you have uh, second, uh, second mate, you have second engineer, you have third mate, you have uh, a third engineer, you have a cadet, you have people who are cooking on the ship, you have people who are fixing things on the ship if the ship breaks, you have people who are wiping things, who are cleaning the ship, all right? So there are different types of people on the ship who do different types of jobs on the ship. So, but to answer your question, you can have, an, you can have as little as nine, 10 people on the ship. And I'm talking about big ships, uh, cargo ships. Uh, you can have as many as 30 people or just uh, over 30 people on a ship. But that's a very, very good question, boy. That's a very, very good question. Thanks. <clears throat> Next question, another question. Yes, Kiki. Um, a ship is too expensive to buy. No, I didn't hear. I didn't get. I didn't get your question. Repeat your question again, boy. A ship's very. Um, a, a ship's very expensive to buy. Buy. Because this thing is too. Yes. Uh, okay, that's a good question, and it's a very tricky question to actually answer. Um, yes, ships are very expensive to buy, um, and also, um, but I'm trying to give you a sort of a a um, a, uh, a monetary sense, or give you a, a, a sense. For instance, if you are buying a ship that is say a container ship or a, a, crude, a crude oil tanker. Um, uh, one of the big ones, um, one of the big ones or a bulk carrier, one of the a cape size or one of the VLCCs, the huge big ones, very big ones. You are looking at anything between 50 and $80 million. So, um, Million. Ships are very expensive. Yeah, 50 to 80, close to 100 million dollars. Yeah, you pay for a ship. A new ship, that is. If, uh, question. Question. I have a question. What, do you, what dollars do you mean? Do you mean United States dollars? No. That's right, boy. That's right. <laughs> do you know what that means? That's, that's right. Uh, that's two US years dollars. Fifty to eighty expensive. million US. You think fifty to eighty million? Very yeah, ships. Eight. What's fifty-eight? Fifty times eighteen. Um. Yes, ships are very expensive to make and uh, and to to buy. So yeah, that's why uh, South Africa has um, has a few ships that we own as a country. I think we are sitting at about five ships right now that are registered or owned by South Africa. Um, so yeah, um, they are quite an expensive, expensive uh, uh, things to buy. So yeah, you have to get a loan from the bank to buy a ship. You can't buy it out of your, out of your own pocket. Okay, let's have another question. Is there another question, maybe? Liam. How many people are in a cruise ship? <laughs> or how many passengers? Okay. Oh, that's a, uh, that's a difficult question to answer. 
uh, that's a very difficult question to answer. Uh, at the present moment, because of uh, coronavirus, a lot of ships, a lot of cruise liners don't have a lot of passengers on them uh, because, uh, because of the COVID-19 situation. Uh, but depending on how big it is, uh, how big the cruise liner is, you can have as many as hundreds, hundreds of people on that ship. Uh, it's upon hundreds of people uh, on that ship at any given time. All right. So as a lot of people, there are a lot of people there that on that ship at any given time. Uh, yeah, cruise lines have uh, can be as big as you know, um, with a number of floors on them, different okay. types of floors, eight floors, ten floors, with different. Um, uh, different floors, uh, different levels, different levels having different equipment, different amenities and different activities that can be done on them. So a lot of people can be in a cruise line at any given time. All right. Um, yeah. So yes, 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 boy. Rane, uh, Raneya, uh, Paswana. Renaya. Sorry, sorry. Naya, sorry. How much cargo can a normal ship carry? <laughs> okay, uh, you have different types of ships. Okay, uh, um, the largest uh, container uh, ship can carry about twenty-three thousand containers. Uh, twenty-three thousand containers at any given time. Um, and then you have a um, <laughs> you have a crude oil container. I mean, crude oil tanker, for instance, that carries tons and tons. Uh, you have you can have you can have about five hundred um, thousand tons, five hundred thousand tons of oil being carried. Yes. Um, I mean that. And that is a lot of oil, okay? Um, like sometimes can carry hundreds of people at any given time. Um, and then um, row row ships can carry thousands of cars inside them, thousands of cars inside at any given time. So different types of ships can carry a lot of ship inside it, all right? Uh, let's have another question. Are you guys still there? I have a question, Uncle Ulama. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I want to ask. Okay, I learned that we have a, like different professions within the maritime. You have your captain, engineer, and all that. So I wanted to ask on the specific qualification. Let's say I'm in high school. Which subjects should I do in order for me to consider being considered to take um, what a profession in maritime? Okay, that's a very good question. That's a very good question. Um, okay, so let's say uh, there are two streams in, in, uh, in maritime uh, on shipping, on shipping. You can go to sea or you, like I said before, you can go to sea or you can be shore-based, okay? Um, if you want to go to sea, okay, uh, take the line, say you want to be a, a, um, a naval captain uh, or a merchant captain or an engineer or work offshore, all right? Um, work on a ship, essentially. It's very important that you have maths and science. That's, that's without a question. You must have those two subjects. They are very, very important. Maths and science, you must do those um, during your um, three last years of high school. You must have those if you wanna go to sea. Um, if you wanna stay on shore and not go to sea, all right? Maths is still very important. Science, depending on what type of job you're gonna be taking. For instance, if you wanna be a ship builder or a ship architect, Oh, a ship architect, uh, you know, ship designer, 
or you want to work on uh, very technical uh, uh, careers, then uh, math and science is going to be quite important for you. All right, um, uh, if you want to get onto those kind of uh, roles. Uh, but the most fundamental one, I would, even for show-based careers, I would still say math and physics are the fundamental ones. Uh, they're very, very good. But if you don't have physics, uh, it's, it's not a lost course. If you, but you still have maths, it's good to go. And the, the institutions that you can actually go to, where you can do your, uh, after you finish your high school, you can go to, um, in South Africa, uh, the Cape Peninsula University of Technology in Cape Town. That's one place you can go to, to train um, as a, to, if you want to work at sea. Okay, they offer very, very good courses there. Um, Durban University of Technology in, uh, in Durban in KZN is another one um, uh, for both. If you want to go to sea, but also if you don't want to go to sea, you have your you have show-based studies there as well, as well as sea going. Um, you also have uh, in, 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 in Durban, UKZN, University of Kwazulu Natal, uh, they've, they've got very good postgraduate uh, uh, courses in maritime, um, uh, which focus in economics, on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on trade, on shipping, not necessarily seagoing. So, if you want to move from your uh, your honors program from your from your honors program to your master's program to your PhD in shipping, they are one of the good uh, universities that you can actually go to. Univer uh, Deben University of, uh, of Technology as well. Um, in a in in a few years time, we'll be introducing your postgraduate um, uh, uh, courses as well. Um, they've done that already. Um, so up right up to PhD, you'll be able to study at DUT so as well as the UK's learning. And also um, Nelson Mandela University is another one um, where it's, um, uh, it's, it's it, uh, um, how can I put it? Maritime courses, postgraduate maritime courses are there as well. Uh, for instance, if you want to get into policy formulation, uh, if you want to get into port management, uh, if you want to get into shipping, uh, say for instance, want to work for a, a ship. What's going on? I think it's just lagging. What internet connection? Company, uh, like for instance, you know. Um, so you can, you, um, yeah, I'll come to you just now, Kiki. I just want to finish this question. Um, um, Nelson Mandela University is another good place uh, to go to. Um, um, uh, and also, what has actually happened is that even before you finish high school nowadays, there is a, uh, what government has actually introduced uh, courses um, or uh, that form or, uh, or subjects that form part of your high school curriculum uh, for kids in high school. Um, maritime economics and uh, and ship navigation, but these are very basic. There are a number of schools of high schools around spread around the country that actually offer these uh, these courses at a few schools in Durban that I do know about. I think Hillcrest is another one. Um, you have another one in, outside of Cape Town, Simon's Town High School. You have an, a few ones in the Eastern Cape, Saint John, um, um, in uh, East London. A uh, few, I mean, a few are spread around the country, so that kids, even before they finish high school, they can start getting introduced mm -hmm. into shipping or into maritime already. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, I, for instance, went through the, the Salmon's Town one outside of, uh, uh, of uh, Cape Town. I spent three years there. Uh, they offer you a bursary for three years and then you can study there and stay there for three years and study maritime for three years. Uh, so it's a beautiful course. You, uh, so in case at the end, they've got a similar program, um, but you go to, you know, it's not a boarding school there. So you have those programs as well that are there to prepare people so that by the time they get to metric, their, their course is already plotted for them and they know which way do you want to go to see it, right? They still, they don't have to decide and they've got the fundamentals. They understand the fundamentals as well. Um, and also 
you what you also have is a situation where government has an understanding a memorandum, a memorandum of understanding with uh, international universities where south african students can go and study uh, maritime courses uh, overseas uh, one of those arrangements is with a university in sweden the world maritime university uh, a few friends of mine have actually gone there my intention is actually to go there as well sometime in the future um and um and uh, very very good so if you want to do your master's program south africa can send you there uh, through the department of transport go and uh, sorry go and study there um uh, for your for your master's up to phd if you want to further your studies as well and i also believe stellenbosch has got uh, also um, um, uh, shipping or maritime related courses U uct as well has got uh, maritime related courses as well so you can look at their at their website and see what they have um so yes uh, from my memory right now uh, those are the ones that i can actually recall um, and the last one um, international arrangement would be with a university shanghai maritime university as well uh, so you can either go to sweden uh, if you've got that arrangement or you can go to um shanghai in uh, in uh, in china or you can go to um uh, that's another part of china but there are two two parts of china that you can actually go and study uh, for your postgraduate masters or phd so uh, just to uh, briefly those are the those are the options if you want to go and study uh, in maritime where you where you okay. to go thank you uh kiki you raised your hand sorry boy i couldn't actually yeah my question was um if you want to be uh, why do you need to learn science and maths um why do you need to learn science and maths when you do ships okay thank you that's a very bright question uh kiki five you guys are hey you guys have all the questions right the right questions here uh maths and physics all right uh gives you the proper uh, uh fundamental uh understanding to be able to to understand the uh, uh the problems involved in shipping. Let me give you an example of what I mean. For instance, when you are uh, driving a ship, uh, there's a lot of technology right now, but fundamentally you depend on the, what you would call astro navigation. You depend on the stars above you to be able to uh, navigate where you're going. The stars above you, the position of the sun, the position of the moon and things of that nature so you must be able oh, wow. to calculate you must be able to calculate um, um your position the position of the sun the position of certain uh, constellation of stars um, um you know to be able to to steer the ship to where it's supposed to go all right uh, those um, those fundamentals of being able to resolve mathematical problems, scientific problems, um, those fundamentals are very, very important uh, for uh, pursuing a career in, uh, in, uh, in shipping or in, in maritime, all right? So um, for instance, in, in physics, you're going to learn about different uh, chemicals, uh, different materials, uh, different reactions, all right? In a ship, um, if a ship is carrying different types of chemicals, all right, it's carrying oil, it's carrying um, uh, food and all, a lot of reactions will happen on the ship. So you must know if a certain reaction, if a certain chemical, uh, if a certain commodity or a certain chemical, what happens if it mixes with a certain type of chemical? Um, so those fundamentals that you learn about 
the nature of structures, the nature of chemicals, uh, the fundamentals of, um, um, of calculations, and problem and problem solving that you learn from physics and maths are very, very important and are very useful when it comes to shipping and maritime. Uh, can you explain something for me? So if it's overcast, whether at night or during the day, you can't see the sun, you can't see the stars, you can't see the moon. What happens to the ship? <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> Dr. Shepard, now quiet, quiet, quiet. Um, what actually happens is that nowadays, uh, that problem has largely been resolved because of technology. Um, ships right now uh, are getting to a point where in a matter of years, ships will be able to steer themselves without the intervention of human beings. It's still far from now, but say in about 25 to 30 years from now, ships will be able to steer themselves uh, because of the level of development of technology. Um, nowadays, you have technology that can um, basically, that gives you the exact location of the ship. Um, you have radar on the ship. You have uh, positioning technology on the ship you have um, all sorts of technology that shows you your direction, that shows you exactly where you are with, uh, in, 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 in the ocean, that gives you the exact location of every single ship around you. Um, so that's the level of development of technology. So that um, ancient or um, uh, the, the, that technology where you, had, where you had to use the stars and, and um, uh, the sun and things of that nature, that technology has sort of passed away now. You have a lot of um, technology that helps you steer ships. But nonetheless, nonetheless, what is really important is that the fundamentals are still the same. The fundamentals we use to understand how a radar works or how a... Um, a, a positioning, a GPS positioning system fundament is exactly the same um, as the, 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 the principles that you would use, for instance, if you want to find your position using the sun or using the stars or using a land-based landmark. So um, um, nowadays, if it's, for, it's, if, it's, uh, if it's overcast, it doesn't matter because you have a radar, you have a GPS, you have all sorts of um, technology that helps you navigate, uh, whether the sun or the moon or the stars or the clouds are there. It doesn't matter. Nowadays, you can do that without a problem. Mr. Kiki, I think we are exhausted with questions. Pardon? I'm saying I think people are done with their questions. Okay. So, so um, do you have any? Do you have any questions to ask them to see if they are listening? Uncle Lama. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kiki, for that opportunity. Uh, to anybody who's listening right now, uh, can, you, can somebody please give me one type of ship that I mentioned? Uh, that's the first question. Cruise one liner. Type of ship that I mentioned. <laughs> cruise liner. That's right, cruise liner. Another one. Roro ship. <laughs> That's right, Doctor. Roro ship, another one. Okay. Yes, oh, the ship. The ark. <laughs> <laughs> the ark. Yeah, I know. Uh, give me a half mark for that one. Uh, half mark for that one. <laughs> There's also LNG. Is it LNG? Yes, LNG, liquefied natural gas uh, ship. Okay, and then the last question. <laughs> last, and then the last question, 
Uh, can somebody please name for me any type of cargo that ships carry that I mentioned here today? Container. Mm -hmm. Containers. Yes, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Cars. Cars. Food. Cars. That's right. Come on, that's right. <laughs> Food. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Drain pipes. That's another one. Thank you, Lucidi. Another one. Oil, gas. Yes, oil, gas. And then the last one? Food. <laughs> Come on. Yes. yes. <laughs> Food. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, guys, for your attention. I think that's pretty much it for me. Thank you so much for your time and attention and your interest. Uh, I thought I was going to go on for about 20 to 30 minutes, but it has turned out to be an over an hour. Um, yes, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity and this invitation. And uh, yes, if you want to get in touch with me for further questions or further clarity, um, Dr. Shepard has got my contact details and I'm also on Facebook. And I'm also running a YouTube channel of my own where I speak about shipping related issues. Ship to oh. ship on YouTube so you can check out our YouTube channel and so you can find out what's going on. So yeah, thank you so much to the Shepherd and everyone who was here for your time and attention. I really appreciate it and I'm really humble. Thank you so much. What's the name of the channel, Uncle Dilemma? The name mm. of the channel is Ship to Shore. Okay. Nice. Okay. I'm downloaded. <laughs> <laughs> um, plus, how do you spell ship? S H I P. S H I P. Ship. Ship. Hurry.